appreciate you all. We love you today. And uh, we're going to go into the word of God. I believe God has given us something. If you have, uh, well, I know you have your Bible. So I want you to turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Very, very familiar text. Matter of fact, um, I think it was a couple months ago I, I, I shared a message from this text. But God has led me back there. How many of you know there's always a further word? <laughs> it's, it's amazing how, how God can give you something and then lead you back to the same place and give you something further. Isn't it amazing? Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. Amen? If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for allowing us to be assembled in this place and, and, and via Facebook Live. We thank you, Lord, for each and every one of your people. And we pray your blessings, encouragement, and strength to each and every one of their lives. I pray, Lord, for health and strength in their bodies. I pray for open doors. I pray for ways made. I pray for growth in you. And, and Lord, that, that they would be strengthened in every area of their lives. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are in the midst of us. And we thank you, Lord, for, for, for waking us up this morning and for putting in our heart a desire to be amongst your people. And Father, we pray that today that you would, you would just move in the midst of us, that you would speak to us clearly, and that we would hear you. And Father, I ask that you would touch now each and every one of these, your people, touch their eyes that they'd see you and not me. Touch their ears that they hear you, not me. And Father, move me. You come forth in this place. I desire not your glory, but only that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. This morning, I want to talk to you from the thought and attitude adjustment. An attitude adjustment. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, we need an attitude adjustment. <laughs> yes, sir. We need an attitude adjustment. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you recognize it or not, our nation is in a critical condition. Between COVID-19, unemployment, and the racial uh, unrest, things in our nation are quite chaotic, to say the least. In spite of all the signs that speak to the contrary, though, we have, we have people who, I believe, thinks that the answers lies within the hands of one of our elected officials. It is, it is sad to say, but I, I, I am convinced that many people, even church folk, have more confidence in the election than they do the resurrection. But this morning, I want you to understand that I don't believe that, that either, and let me, let me make that plan, I don't believe that either of our, of, of our presidential candidates have the answers to the issues that are plaguing this nation? I don't believe that. I, I, and, and, and just to make it clear, I don't believe any man does. Andre Crouch wrote a song years ago. He said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. Hey, that's the only one. He's the only one that has the answer. 
We need him to intervene in our situations. We need him to move on our behalf. And though, though, though I believe, now please understand, though I believe that, that we are supposed to be a part of the process and we need to vote. Please understand, I believe we, we need to vote. I, 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 I want you to understand that I, I, can't, I can't believe in the idea that, that some man has the answer to these things. I just don't. And again, I, I, I say that we absolutely, we absolutely have to be a part of the process. We have to vote. Um, and because if we don't vote, then, then we, are, we have no room to, to, to gripe or complain about what goes on in the nation. So, so I want to say that all of you, you have a civic duty to go be a part of the process. Make sure that you vote. However, in your voting, make sure that you're not more political than you are spiritual. I, even in your voting, make sure that you're not more political than you are spiritual. What do I mean by that? We got to make sure that we're not we're not voting based on based on what what is inside of us only, just what we want or think. I heard somebody say recently that that when they vote, they don't vote for an individual. They vote based on a platform. And that sounds good on the surface. But the problem, here, herein lies the problem. If you vote uh, based on, on a platform, but if the individual has no character, how can you trust the platform if you can't trust the individual? I'm sorry. Because you can tell me anything. You can tell me exactly what I want to hear. But if you have no character, then, then once you get what you want, you're going to do what you want. I can't get much help this morning. It's amazing to me how people will say, yeah, well, I'm, well, I'm voting based on it. And they, they use it to justify voting for who they want to vote for. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, we cannot do that. Think about it. If you would not allow someone who lacks character to run the register at McDonald's, why would you allow someone who has no character to run your city, your state, your nation. How in the world does that make sense? Somewhere along the line, we have to, we have to pay attention. And you say, well, you say, well, 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 they all got character flaws. That's true. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we can't rely just on what these people tell us. We got to pray and we got to talk to God and say, God, who do you want me to vote for? Who would you have me to vote for? What, who do you want in office? Mm-hmm. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not. To thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. When you vote based on, based on platform, based on party, based on preference, then you're leaning to your own understanding. And that is contrary to what the Bible told us to do. Last week, I believe it was, Katia and I was talking about the upcoming election and we were saying, you know what? We want to make sure that we vote in accord with what God wants. I want to hear from God. Now, I know what I feel. I know what I think. 
And I know what I want, but that ain't enough good enough. I got God. What do you want? And Lord, I want to vote in accord with what you want. <laughs> but in order for us to do that, we got to have an attitude adjustment. <laughs> I'm telling you, in order for you to, 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 to humble yourself to that place, it's going to require an attitude adjustment. As we look at the text, again, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, and will heal the land. It is quite obvious that our nation is in dire need of healing. However, in order to receive it, there are some requirements that must be met. It's important that we understand the responsibility that we have as the children of God to meet those, those, those requirements. Because the reality is, is Those responsibilities fall squarely in the lap of the church. For he said, if my people, which are called by my name, we got to understand that we have this responsibility and, and, and that our responsibility is to be preservers. Bible says ye are the salt of the earth. So then if 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 we want if we want the benefits of 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 being the children of God then we must also accept the responsibilities of being the children of God. We can't, we can't shrug those responsibilities and, 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 and point our finger at everybody else. We have to own it. And understand that there's work for us to do. But in order to get there, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to have an attitude adjustment. We don't need to let go of our smug attitudes, our self-righteousness, our holier than I, holier than thou attitudes. And we must adopt a repentant attitude, one that doesn't point the fingers at others, but looks internally. Over the next few weeks, if the Lord says the same. We're going to talk about the four facets of a repentant attitude because I believe that is what it's going to take for us to get to the healing place. I'm simply saying this morning we're in need of an attitude adjustment. the first facet of a repentant attitude is to humble ourselves. The word humble comes from the Greek word tapino which means to abase or to bring low. The new Oxford American Dictionary describes it as having or showing a modest or low esteem estimate of one's own importance. If we expect to get through to God, then we must humbly, we must humbly approach his throne of grace. We, we, we can't go prideful, 
But we have to go in humility. And that requires that rather than focusing on the issues of others, we have to focus on the issues that exist in us. The Bible says this in Matthew ch chapter 7, verses 3 through 5. It says, why do you see the, the speck in your brother's eye, but fail to see the beam of wood in your eye, in your own? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye while there is a beam in your own? You hypocrite. First remove the beam from your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. One of the biggest obstacles standing between us and healing is pride. Because it causes us to focus on everyone else's issues and overlook and even dismiss those of our own. We'll walk around as if we got it all together and as if everybody else is the problem. But ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to get to the healing place, we have to, we have to humble ourselves and look inside and look into ourselves and, and, and be honest about the things in us. Think about this even in dealing with this COVID-19. We have been instructed to wear masks and to social distance. Yet, we have folk who refuse to comply. They value their own opinion more than they do others. And they have little or no regard for, for um, the peace of mind to those they come in contact with. They just don't. The only thing they care about is themselves. And some have even tried to spiritualize it and question, question people's faith for wearing a mask. Yeah. But the Bible tells me in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except God, except from God, and authorities that exist are appointed by God. See, pride picks and chooses when that scripture applies. See, some folk want to stand on that when our president speaks. But then they want to ignore it when the governor speaks. This is what we got to come to place to understand is that that scripture is true. And I, I, I've heard a lot of folk quote it. During, the, during, during this, the term of our current president. But here's what you need to know, America. That same scripture was true prior to this president. It is true now with him, and it will be true after him. And pride, only pride, picks and chooses. Only pride says, yeah, yeah, when he says something, I'll listen to it. But everybody else, I ain't listening. No. You need that attitude adjustment. If we're going to get to the healing place, if you're really sick of all the stuff that's going on, then the scripture has plainly told us that there are conditions to get to the healing. And 
just saying, ladies and gentlemen, if we want to get to the healing place, we got to have an attitude adjustment. So we're moving on when we consider the racial unrest that exists in the nation. I can tell you without a shadow of doubt that a major factor is pride to my African-American brothers and sisters. You need to know that only pride will make you think that all Caucasians are racist. Only pride will make you believe that somehow every conflict that you have with, 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 with uh, a, a Caucasian is racially motivated. That is not true. That's not true. Only pride will make you not look internally at the issues in us. We cannot blame the Caucasian community for all of our problems. It would be easier, but it wouldn't be right. And we, we cannot allow ourselves to do it. Now, does racism exist? Yes. Is it fair? No. Is the ground level? No. But can we use that as an excuse not to succeed? Absolutely not. Because there are too many success stories behind us who had it harder, with less access, and they still succeeded. So for us to stand in 2020 with the access that we have, with the things, the tools that we've been given, and say that we can't succeed, I'm sorry. We don't get a pass on that. You've heard me say it before. I've said to, our, to my young people that I work with at CBCC, if it's raining outside, and I don't know it's raining outside, if I go outside and get wet, I didn't know. But if I know it's raining outside, and I go outside without an umbrella, if I get wet, there ain't nobody's fault but mine. And if we try to play this game of life as if the ground is level, when we know it's not, we got to look at ourselves. I'm just saying that somewhere, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to have an attitude adjustment. And we're going to have to look internally, and we're going to have to say, yeah, you think there are some things that are absolutely wrong, and we want those things fixed. But however, we got to look inside us and decide that we're going to fix us. Yeah, you don't get a whole lot of attaboys and likes on that kind of stuff right there. That's okay, though. I'm going to keep on preaching. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. I'm just saying. That if we will fight our internal issues with the same fervor and vigor that we fight our external ones, we'll reach the heights and the dreams that we have. We'll get there. But we can't just fight the, the, the external ones and never address the internal ones. And I'm just saying, ladies and gentlemen, we have to have to my, to my uh, uh, African-American brothers and sisters, we're going to have to look internally and we've got to have an attitude adjustment. 
We can't, we can't allow ourselves to move off of anger and, 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 and frustration. We got to be thoughtful and strategic. We got to have a plan. I'm just saying it requires that we have an attitude adjustment. Because I absolutely believe in equal rights and equal opportunities, I got to talk to my Caucasian brothers and sisters. Oh, yeah, you didn't think I wasn't going to talk to you. Let me tell you something. If we're going to get to our healing place, then you must humble yourselves as well. It is pride that would make you think it necessary to proclaim all lives matter anytime you hear black lives matter. And I'm not talking about the organization because I don't know about that organization to throw my hat in and say I support that totally. But the slogan, Black Lives Matter, oh, I'm all over that like a duck on the June bug. <laughs> Let me tell you this. In 2019, early, early, early one morning, I was, I was getting ready to go to work. And... I broke my toe. Oh, I, I hit it on something that my wife had at the foot of the bed. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> we'll preach on that another day. <laughs> but I broke my toe. And I immediately knew that it was broke. So I called the doctor, I got an appointment, and I went. When I get to the doctor, my eyes matter. My heart matter. My knee matter. My hands matter. But my toe was broke. And so when I saw the doctor, I didn't need him to look at my eyes. I didn't need him to check my heart. I needed him to check my toe. Because my toe was the one that was broke. Do you recall that the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18 verse 12, how think ye if a man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray. Doth he not leave the ninety and nine and go into the mountains to seek that which was astray? Even Jesus thought it necessary. If a part of the body was in danger, to take the focus off of everything else and go after one. Please understand that the reason why there's this, 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 this movement of Black Lives Matter is because there, it, we, our lives have been undervalued. And I know I know, I know. That all lives matter. I get it. But you got to see that 
the same level of value has not been put on the lives of people who look like me. And I know some of you think, some of you think, well, if you want us to value your life, then you need to value it. Now, I agree with that wholeheartedly, 100%. However, please do not use that as an excuse to justify the killing of black men and women by the police. Please don't use that as an excuse to, to, to overlook it and gloss it over and say that's okay. Because here is the difference, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the difference. As wrong and as horrible is, it is for blacks to be killing each other the way they do. They have not been sworn to protect and serve. When a police officer takes the oath, an oath to protect and serve, that protection and service was not just to one race of people. You took that oath to protect and serve people who look like me. And for you or for anybody to justify what we've been seeing going on in this nation time and time and time again. That's ungodly. How dare you try to justify that. It's not right. And somewhere along the line, we need for you, our, our, our Caucasian brothers and sisters, to stand up with us and say enough is enough. I'm telling you, but it's going to require that you have an attitude adjustment. Let me just go on. You need to also understand that only pride would make you believe that slavery, vagrancy laws, Jim Crow laws, and, 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 the, and the Southern Manifesto. Only pride would make you believe that those things don't still affect our society today. Think about this. Life is a relay. Life is a relay. And every generation passes a baton to the next generation. Well, from 1619, if I'm not mistaken, from 1619 to 1865, slavery was legal in America. So, for 246 years, I want you to stay in the mind of a relay. For 246 years, black folk weren't able to run. They were in the race, but kept from running at all while Caucasians were able to run freely. 
All right? If, if 40 years is a generation, what is that? Five generations? So for five generations, people who look like me couldn't run. So they're in the race. You know, they're in the race, waiting to run, can't go. Meanwhile, they see their counterparts running, prospering, flourishing, waiting to run. Then in 1865, slavery is, is, is abolished, but here comes the vagrancy laws, Jim Crow, and the Southern Manifesto that is put in place to say, ah, you can run, but not really. So, from, from, from 1865 to 1964, to 1964, which is the year I was born, those, that, that was still, those laws were still, some of those laws were still in place. So, for another almost 100 years, we're in the race. However, we have to run hurdles while they get to run freely. How in the world can you look at that truth and look me in my face and tell me to get over it already? And I've heard it. I've heard it more than one time. Slavery been over for da 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 da. Get over it already. We're talking about seven generations. Seven generations. At the least, because let's be honest, though, 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 though the hurdles might, might not be the same, you know how, you know, if you know anything about track, there's high hurdles and low hurdles. And the reality is the hurdles ain't ever been moved. They might have lowered them. For... Anyone to have the idea of the audacity to think that all of that wouldn't still be affecting this generation, that's only pride. And ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to get to the healing place, you got to let go of that pride. I'm saying this, and I'm going to be almost, I'm, I'm about done. I'm about to close. I want to say to all of my Caucasian brothers and sisters, I want you to know this. I don't hold you responsible for what your forefathers did. I absolutely don't. And you don't owe me an apology. Not at all. However, I do hold you responsible for acknowledging that it was wrong. And I do hold you uh, uh, responsible for, for, for putting a stop to all the inequalities that, that still exist because of it. You can't go back and change what happened. However, you can take a stand now and say, you know what? Yeah, all that stuff happened. I, I, I admit it. It was wrong. My forefathers was wrong. And we ain't going to celebrate it. Oh, my God.
You want us to honor the flag? Well, understand, the flag don't mean the same thing to us as it do to you. It hasn't meant liberty and justice for us. I remember a story about my great uncle who fought, if I'm not in, in mistaken, in World War II. He talked about coming home on the train and there being German prisoners who got better treatment than he did after fighting for this nation. But then you think that we're going to stand up with the same pride that you have? And please understand, I love America. There ain't any other place I'd rather be. But the truth be told, America has not been good to people who look like me. Let me say this, and I'll be done. To all America. Red, yellow, black, and white. Things are chaotic. And none of us, I don't think, are enjoying what's going on. But if we won't change, then we have to have an attitude adjustment. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to humble ourselves. We're going to have to humble ourselves. And that begins to looking internally and saying, God, fix the issues in me. I don't know about you, but I want to get to the healing place. And ladies and gentlemen, that's absolutely going to require that we have an attitude adjustment. And that begins with humbling ourselves. Amen. Will you stand? starts with us. If we want the world to change, then we have to change. And we have to be the example of what it's supposed to be. And so we must humble ourselves and look internally, search our own hearts so that we can get ourselves in the position for God to do something. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask you, first of all, to forgive us. Forgive us, forgive us for, being, for being smug and arrogant, high-minded, and prideful. Yeah. 
Forgive us for acting like somehow we could do this on our own. God, it's evident that we need you. And we humble our hearts. And we humble ourselves before you. And we acknowledge that you are the king of kings. And you alone are Lord of the lords. And Father, we stretch our hands to thee. No other help we know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, where shall we go? We have no place to go, God. We come to you. Asking God that you would intervene. Intervene in our lives, intervene in our circumstances. Make every crooked place straight, God. We need thee. Every day, every hour, we need thee. And Father, we pray. We pray, God, that you would bring the healing that is needed in our nation. This morning, we bind our prayers together and we petition you, God. Please hear our plan. Hear our cry this morning. And come to our rescue. We give you all the praise. All the glory. And all the honor. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Facebook family. We thank God for you. We thank you for tuning in. Our prayer is that something said today has been a blessing to you. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to donate to it, you can hit the like button or hit the uh, um, button on the bottom and it'll take you to where you can donate. Also, you know what, in this, in this epi epidemic, you know, pandemic people are not able to get out and, and witness like they normally would so if you believe this word was worth hearing share it you may, may, not, may, be, may not be able to go out um, and, and visit with them personally but if you hit that share button then all of your friends will get a chance to hear this word if you feel it's something worth them hearing, then share it. Because our desire is that God's word would go forth and that lives would be changed. We thank God for you.